Most noble, here's at the inscription at Delos, most noble is that which is justest, most just, and best in health. That is noblest. Highest amount of justice and the most healthy, but pleasantest is it to win what we love. Take that home with you if you please. We're going to skip a bit from there. There are some things the lack of which takes the luster from happiness. Skip a bit. For the man who is very ugly in appearance or ill-born or solitary and childless is not very likely to be happy. So, just by sheer chance you can have things that will reduce your likelihood of being happy. And perhaps a man would be still less likely if he had thoroughly bad children or friends or had lost good children or friends by death, less likely to be happy. As we said, mentioned before, happiness seems to need this sort of prosperity, in addition for which reason some identify happiness with good fortune, though others identify it with virtue. So, some people say, if you're born without riches and, and so on, you might not be able to be happy at all. And other people say, your virtues can lead to happiness no matter what your worldly riches. But, I mean, if a man has seven kids born in a row and all of them die and his wife dies, and, uh, you know, and, and then he gets killed in a horrible war, it's not really his fault. That's just a tragedy of events. It's a tragedy of the world we live in. This is the problem for people who believe in God to explain. Why is there evil? Why does evil exist? Why does misery exist? So... Um, some people identify happiness with good fortune. Some people identify with worldly goods. Other people say that it's a virtue. Even a virtuous man, though, who, all of whose children die and then he gets killed in a bad war, he might not be so happy. For this reason also the question is asked whether happiness is to be acquired by learning or by habituation or some other sort of training. Right? Now whether it's virtues or worldly goods, how do you get there? Whichever answer you offer. Um, or does it come in the virtue of some divine providence or possibly again by chance, absolute chance, maybe that's what it is. Um, happiness seems, however, to be among the most godlike things. For that which is the prize and the end of virtue seems to be the best thing in the world and something godlike and blessed. Bit of rationalism there, a uh, bit platonic there, fine. To entrust to chance what is the greatest and the most noble would be a very defective arrangement. I'll pause there. He's saying that if we do want to say happiness can be a function, function of, of chance. Happiness can be that your dad was rich and you were just born in a golden age and uh, your family uh, was in a good place in Athenian society or whatever, you know. That can be a, func a function of happiness. But he says if we entrust all of it just to chance, if we say happiness as such is chance, that he says that's going to be a defective arrangement, so we can't allow us to say that it's all in the hands of chance. And indeed, we wouldn't say that, would we, ladies and gentlemen? We would say, well, it's chance whether or not you're born to a rich man's uh, family, but you could still be so defective in your happiness so defective in your actions and the actions of your soul and your mind that even though you're rich you were not happy even though chance had dealt you a good hand you didn't uh, end up liking what happened so we could say that chance plays a role but can't be the central point skipping down a bit we call neither ox nor horse nor any of the other animals happy for none of them is capable of sharing in such activity, the activity of the soul that brings about not just chance happiness, but some other form of happiness. For this reason also a boy is not happy, for he is now, I might pull back just a bit here and say, I don't know about this Aristotle. He says, for this reason a boy is not happy, for he's not yet capable of such acts, acts of the soul which bring happiness, owing to his age. And boys who are called happy are being congratulated by reason of the hopes we have for them. Uh, take that if you like. And then we skip just a bit. The most prosperous may fall into great misfortunes 
in old age. Going back to the thing, is, is chance the central thing or not? He says, even if you're the most prosperous, you may get to a very old age and fall into misfortune, as is told of Priam in the Trojan cycle. And one who has experienced such chances and has ended wretchedly, no one would call happy. But aren't they happy a bit along the way, maybe? Now, that brings up a bit of a problem. If we could say, if after he dies, he wasn't a happy man. You can't. You have to draw a line somewhere during his life and say, well, he was happy for this part of it or whatever. Continuing, must no one at all then be called happy while he lives? Must we, as Solon says, see the end? I pause there. You don't have to let all the cards play out. You could say, now I've seen this, I can die happy, no matter what the next 30 years brings or whatever. Like Ayn Rand said to Leonard Peikoff after she had published Atlas Shrugged, she said, uh, walking with him down uh, the street in, in uh, Manhattan, she said, don't ever give up what you want in life. The struggle is worth it. No matter what comes after that. So, uh, answers this question then, doesn't it? Even if we are to lay down this doctrine, is it also the case that a man is happy when he is dead? Right? So we say, well, wait till he dies, and then we'll judge whether he's happy or not. But then he's dead, and could you actually ascribe happiness to a dead person? Or is not this quite absurd, especially for those of us who say that happiness is an activity rather than some form or some property or something? Uh, okay, we're going to skip just a bit there, skip about a paragraph or so. Now, if we must see the end, and only then call a man happy, not as being happy, but as having been so before, surely this is a paradox, right? It's a paradox, because then happiness doesn't exist if you can either say, he was happy in his life, but we couldn't state it so at the time because his life hadn't ended, then happiness can't exist, so... Clearly, happy, happiness has to be during your life. It has to be in re, with disregard to the fact that the future might not be perfect. Um, and it has to be judged on your activities. We skip a little ways now. If activities are, as we said, what gives life to its character, then no happy man can become miserable, for he will never do the acts that are hateful and mean. For the man who is truly good and wise, we think always... Uh, makes the best of circumstances. Interesting thing there, we would call that person an optimist. The glass is half full. There's a silver lining behind every cloud. Uh, the man who is truly wise always makes the best of circumstances. As a good general makes the best military use of the army at his command, and a good shoemaker makes the best use of the shoes out of the hides that are given him. It makes the best shoes and hides out of the hides that are given him. Now, um, y if you're a military commander, you don't lament the fact that you have no B-52s at your command. You don't lament the fact that you have old Russian tanks and you're going up against um, uh, more modern American tanks, if you're, say, the Israeli army commander. You don't lament that fact. You just make the best of the situation you have. That's what we would call a happy man, says Aristotle. And I submit that to you, ladies and gentlemen. I, I agree. I think he's got a pretty watertight case there, airtight case. He says, and so with all other craftsmen, no matter what they are, if it's a happy man, he makes the best with what he has rather than expecting to be given the best in order to make his way. Okay. Neither will he be moved from his happy state easily or by any ordinary misadventures. Right? Things along the way aren't going to upset him. Oh, it's, that's just something that happens every day to lots of people. I'm not worried about that. You know, like he has a fender bender on the way to work. Some people let it ruin their day, go home and they're mad. You know, or you could say, no, that's, that's actually a normal occurrence. I can't let it uh, disrupt my emotions. Um, see, he cannot be moved from his happy state by any ordinary misadventure, but only by many great ones. And even then, like Howard Rourke says, the pain only goes down to a certain point. Nor, if he has had many great misadventures, will be recoverer, will, will he recover, pardon me, his happiness in a short time, but if at all, only in a long and complete one in which he has